this is not a small thing that is happening in Copenhagen. In fact, it's very, very significant. And whilst in the early years and, and early months leading up to Copenhagen, I think it's fair to say that the debate was dominated by the, 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 the big industrialized countries, the OECD countries, as well as China, India, Brazil. I'm really pleased to see that Africa has stepped up and stepped up in a major way in terms of voice. And we from the bank side have, of course, been delighted to see that happen and done what we could to support it. So what the African position is, is that they're looking for a number of outcomes. They're looking for financing. They're looking for financing because adaptation for Africa will be one of the, Africa clearly will be one of the hardest uh, hit regions in terms of impact on climate change. So financing, particularly for adaptation. Two, we're looking for technology technology so that Africa can leapfrog. There's no need for Africa to go through a polluting age. Technology is available, but that technology is more expensive. Africa cannot be expected to take more expensive technologies and subsidize the R&D development. So subsidize technology, i.e. a financing of that technology gap. Three, we are obviously also looking for um, two particular things that deals with where Africa can essentially maximize their carbon credits. It's a little technical, but Africa wants to see that forestry and agriculture becomes part of the carbon trading regime so that they can sell those assets at the global markets. That's what Africa is looking for. The priority for Africa is development. The priority for the bank in Africa is to push the development agenda, without a doubt. But what I think Prime Minister Mellis came out and said is, we have no choice but to adapt or die. This means that the kind of investments that we've been doing, we need to find ways of also ensuring that those investments are resilient in a climate changing world. What does that mean? It means that the kind of infrastructure we put in place needs to be able to withstand more intense rains, more intense floods, longer droughts so that we store water, roads are built to capacity that they do not wash away in more intense rains. It means that the, our urban development, which of most of Africa's cities are coastal cities. So in the case of sea level rise, that's an issue we need to be careful of in urban planning. Many of our cities are indeed uh, where the poor people live. They live in the floodplains. They are the ones who will be mostly affected. So in climate change, sorry, in development, we need to incorporate the climate change dimensions. Similarly in agriculture, probably our growing seasons will be shorter with more intense rains. What does this mean for the kind of seeds we use? What does it mean for our agricultural regimes? So we need to understand that and we need to integrate and mainstream that. That's on the adaptation side. On the mitigation side, we need to ensure, as I mentioned before, that technology is available so that countries can adapt new technologies while pushing on the energy agenda. So there's by no means is it giving up on development. Development remains our absolute primary objective, but we need to ensure that we do this in a climate smart way. Africa needs to use all available energy sources. Africa cannot be the one that starts reducing its energy uh, potential and reducing the scope and breadth of available energy sources um, at this time. So Africa has contributed today about 4% of the CO2 emissions that are produced globally. That means 96% are produced somewhere else. So let Africa not be the one that has to pay the price. Having said that, and so that means that Africa will want to use and will want to draw on all available energy sources. This means obviously thermal uh, and hydrocarbon based uh, energy, as well as uh, renewables, be they large hydro or small hydro, wind, solar, etc. That being the case, however, um, and, and the bank will support uh, Africa in this endeavor. In Rwanda, for instance, 6% of the population have access. 94% do not have access. Development cannot take place without modern energy. The moment you have energy, health outcomes are better, education outcomes are better, and overall investment climate improves. So energy is key. So that means that on the one hand, we will support an energy agenda that will use all available resources at the same time 
we will work with all countries to help them get towards a low carbon trajectory. This means that those that are coal-based, we will work with them and ensure that as they are developing their energy resources, they work on, for instance, carbon capture and storage ready plants. They work on scrubbers and ensure that they have lower emission loads. They work on getting a healthy mix of energy resources, not just the, high, uh, the heavy hydrocarbon based uh, fuels, but also other resources. But the bottom line is, Africa needs energy to develop and there has to be a degree of equity in energy development uh, and so the bank is very, very um, working very hard on the energy access agenda. It's a priority for the region and that one that everyone can understand uh, as we are all sitting in our western nicely comfortable air-conditioned offices. It's very easy to have opinions about this. Um, at this point, Africa's position is let other countries reduce their emissions, let us help us increase access, and we will be responsible about this. And so that's a very responsible position to have for the continent.